Hello and welcome to Apex Instant Tips, episode number 124, brought to you most Fridays at 12.05 Eastern Time. I'm the host, Anton. We have with us today a very special guest, Hayden. Welcome. Uh, great to be here, Anton. Uh, today, I think we have a, um, a fun demo. Yeah, um, I think it's something that um, hopefully will get people too ex excited about um, putting in their own uh, entries into the template component challenge. Um, we've yes. talked about it so a couple times. I am um, at, at the sort of 80% mark of having a template entry ready for submission. And I, I thought I would um, sh share uh, the work I've done so far. Yeah, and I, this is something we can cover in five minutes. Um, you can't, probably can't, write a winning entry in five minutes, um, but you could steal what we're about to show you and, and spruce it up and then you, okay. <laughs> you might have one. So um, nobody gets to steal Hayden's, uh, Hayden's entry in code, but, um, but hopefully it will um, uh, inspire folks to, to do one of their own. And yeah. hello to, is it, I, I always hate trying to, is it Dirham? I'm going to go with Durham, um, but hello. Um, so, uh, so here we go. Um, What's uh? What are we looking at, Hayden? Got it. So my opening premise oh, is either one that's going to connect camera. with people or it won't. Okay. Uh, so the uh, so so I'm going to ask you, Anton, if, if this speaks to you. So uh, I am not a big fan of interactive grids. You know, I love them and I hate them at the same time. They they do so much, but the you know I I find that the interactive reports. I, I, I'm more familiar with them, and for folks that are novices and they're they're using uh, an Apex application for the for the first time or or, in, or sporadically, I, interactive reports seem to be a lot a lot more intuitive to me. Agree. Uh, however, there's one feature of the inter interactive grid that keeps me continuing to use it, and it is the um, uh, uh, row selector functionality that. Um, has some very that is often very handy. So, like if I want to uh, select many rows and delete them or do perform something with them, having that there is, is very handy. So, uh, let's just quickly demonstrate how it works with an interactive grid. So, now that you've selected uh, some rows, uh, a um, some JavaScript objects are automatically populated for you. So, I can toss a little JavaScript in here. There's my widget. This this is the uh, person IG, I think it was IG. Um, let's see if, if that works. Um, oh, maybe I think I called it TG. I don't know why, but um, let's paste that in there again. Uh, unless it, unless it was, I think you might've, I think it actually, I, I think it works. Yeah. So oh. Oh, yeah, oh, I'm sorry. It did work. Okay. There we go. So we yeah. ended up with an array um, of the selected items. Yeah. So I thought, uh, why can't I have this feature for the interactive report? And so I attempted to imitate it with um, a template component for the interactive report. Great. Cool. Um, so why don't we show the result first? Let's do it. Um, so uh, now when you visit the interactive report. So this is an interactive report. So there's now a column that looks pretty similar. And when you select items, um, it populates a JavaScript array. Um, and I have, uh, I've called my one, uh, my I, IRS, uh, it, there are two R's. Oh, one S, yep. Yeah. Okay. And it, and it populates, um, it, it doesn't take the whole row, it just takes the primary key that you designate. And then you can do with that what you will. You can turn it into JSON, you can pass it um, at, back to your, uh, uh, database colon limited. Yeah, so uh, we wrote a little dynamic action here that that grabs it and puts it into an item. Um, and then perhaps in the um, remaining two minutes, we can discuss how to configure it. So um, I have a public uh, GitHub that we'll share the link to, so that people can um, install the plugin. So you just go to the source folder here, download um, the plugin, and install it. Okay, so I've, I've got it installed here. Let's go to our um, our IG page, and we will um, we'll just create a, a, an analogous uh, one to the right of this. So, in a minute, uh, let's see if we can do it. So we'll do another uh, region. 
Okay. So not started on a new row. We'll make it an interactive report, um, which is what it's the same table as the other one. So it's this one right here. Right. Uh, and then I think all I have to do is come to this column and, and you can either create a new column or use a, an existing column to, for the IR row selector. And it's the ID column. That's right. And um, uh, in the um, help, uh, I've um, pasted in the uh, necessary uh, HTML for um, what to put in the header. Right there. And be sure to align the heading and the column value for it so that it looks good. Okay, so let's see, is that all it takes? Look at that. I have two reports, very similar looking. And they one is an interactive grid on the left and the other is the interactive report on the right. Yeah, and so, um, and now when you visit your console. Mm -hmm. You can uh, type uh, our PKS and it, and it has um, uh, populated an array with the primary keys uh, that you uh, have chosen for that table. So similar, not identical functionality, but um, uh, in my mind, uh, it, it achieves what I want. There we go. I think with four seconds left, uh, we've given the tip. Folks can download it, install the, the plugin component, and they're off to the races. Yeah. Um, Super easy to access as well. As I mentioned, we put a, um, uh, ah, we have some uh, questions. Yes. Yeah, so um, it just operates uh, off of uh, what is in the DOM. So um, as you uh, as you paginate, um, it'll, uh, and, and you do select all, it'll select w whichever rows are visible. So it's, it's only going to put in the array rows that are visible on the page at this moment. But when you paginate, it doesn't remove anything from the array. That's correct, yeah. So, um, OK, so you can, yeah. So, I, I, and I guess that depends on what your, you know, what, what you want your, your experience to be, right? Yeah. Um, I, I'm not sure, but I think Gmail behaves like that as well um, when you select things. But, it, you know, your, your experience may, may, uh, may vary as to what, what you want, but you can always add to it. Um, so. Um, and I, I welcome any feedback on how to improve it. Yeah, um, excellent. Uh, so again, what I can do is I will take this URL and I'll put it right in the public chat. Um, but I don't think that URLs will stick around, I'm afraid. Well, maybe they will. I don't know. We'll find out. Um, uh, but there we have it. Um, so I have, um, uh, let's see, I thought you could even enable or disable the checkbox depending on some condition. Uh, um, so good comment. Can, the challenge ends October 31st. So um, if you want to steal Hayden's plugin, you've got to get on it quickly. <laughs> um, uh, Angel, or Andres Lopez says, I thought you could even enable or disable this checkbox depending on some condition. Um, uh, you, you definitely can. Um, I, there are, uh, I can't, I, I haven't built that into the plugin because I wasn't sure what the use case would be. But um, yeah, uh, certainly, um, if, if you have any recommendations for what additional functionality you'd want to see in the plugin, to your point, Andres, that can be enabled in the template component itself. Um, so yes, and Angel says to have the same behavior as Gmail. I think, I mean, often I, I, uh, I look to, and we've talked about this before, I look to the applications that I like to to define the behavior that I expect, or, or, you know, that I like or that I use a lot, and that I think other people use a lot to try and mimic the behavior of, of other applications. So, yeah. um, uh, Gmail would be one that I would I would likely mimic. I also often mimic the behavior of the Apex Builder itself because it's something that I'm familiar with. I think a lot has gone into that, but um, so a couple of things there. Um, well, I have um, I do have a sort of a funny little um, anecdote, but it, it relies to a wisdom of the week that I think we've given, talked about in the past. Um, and so that, so I'll show it first. Um, and my wife came across this, uh, this guy the other day um, in the grocery store. 
Um, this here, you can see, was uh, an, an older gentleman had uh, had this in his shopping cart because this is his therapy dog. It's a stuffed animal, right? It is a stuffed animal, but he had been, you know, he had met with his doctor and his doctor, you know, he, he had some, you know, he was a nervous guy, an older gentleman, a nervous guy. And the, the doctor suggested that he get a therapy dog. Um, turns out he's afraid of dogs. Okay. But he thought it was a good idea anyway. Yeah. So he, in fact, got this therapy dog and he takes this therapy dog around with him. And uh, he says it really works. He says people come up to him, they talk to him about his therapy dog. It engages him with other people. It, you know, he gets a lot of benefits of this from this therapy dog. I believe that, yeah. But I kind of relate it to the rubber ducky debugging, right? In that you can have, you can explain your your code to a rubber ducky. I've sometimes said a potted plant. Um, you know, it, it's it's about interacting, getting it out there, talking. I'm sure this this guy actually says he sometimes talks to this dog. You know, tells him his problems, right? Just just like you might to. I mean, even talking to a therapy dog probably doesn't really too much, but you're talking about, right? So I thought it was really cute. Um, and yeah. this guy he says he gets a lot out of it. So there you go. That's my uh, I guess it's wisdom of the week. So perform code reviews with your therapy rubber duck. Yes, rubber duck. Yes. Um, or for that matter, if you have a, a dog, I'm sure your dog would be a, a good code review uh, <laughs> partner as well. So I, may, I may have to try that with Theo here. Um, you can, uh, you can, yeah. I, um... I'd, I'd worry too much about Theo's harsh critique of my code. He can be rough. He can be tough in that regard. Um, well, this time uh, was a definitely a short uh, instant tip, 12 minutes, um, but short and sweet. Yeah, so a couple of links to put in the comments, the link to the GitHub repo and the link, to, and again, the link to the um, template component challenge. All right. Um, enjoy your weekend, everybody. Have a good weekend. Bye-bye.